and welcome to the second session of Education and British Rule with our teacher and subject expert, Ms. Buam. Hello, Ms. Buam. Hello, ma'am. And dear students, before we start a new session, let us quickly go through what we have learned in our last session. In the last episode, we started with a decline of the traditional or the indigenous system of education and the introduction of the British system. We also looked at the important landmarks in the development of the British system of education. The first phase extended from the formation of the East India Company in 1600 AD to 1813. The second phase of the development took place from 1813 onwards after the introduction of the Charter Act. Section 43 of this Act stated, that the East India Company should set aside one lakh rupees to promote the knowledge of science among Indians. The promotion of English education resulted in the dispute or controversy popularly known as Orientalists' Anglicist Controversy. This dispute was referred to Lord Thomas Babington Macaulay, who made some strong observations about it. Lord Bentick the then Governor General of India approved Lord Macaulay's minutes and passed his resolution of 1835. Last time, we saw how the British gradually increased their role in Indian education. The Charter Act of 1813 forced the East India Company to give top priority to education of the Indians. Then came the controversy over the medium of instruction. Do you remember that? The Orientalist Anglicist controversy and Raja Ram Mohan Roy wanted higher education to be in English. Now, when the British introduced higher education in India, it obviously benefited the Indians a lot. However, what were the motives behind this move? The British were gaining more territory and they wanted educated Indians to man lower administrative posts by educating a few Indians education would filter down to the rest of people, the downward filtration policy. Let's move on and study about the effects of Western education. We shall also look into the Indian involvement in the spread of education. In 1854, Sir Charles Wood formulated a plan known as Wood's Dispatch. Let us take a closer look at what this dispatch achieved. Because of Wood's dispatch, departments of education were established. These departments supervised education and provided financial aid to the educational institutions in the provinces. Wood's dispatch stressed the need for technical education, teacher training and women's education and the institutions were planned all over the country. In 1857, Universities were set up at Calcutta, Bombay and Madras. The government wanted to encourage the people to open schools and started the policy of grant in aid. Ma'am, what is grant in aid? A very good question. What is grant in aid you want to know? Well, students, listen attentively. Grant in aid is a subsidy or it is a grant given to private organizations wherein the government shares the cost of running the institution. What happens then when people get educated and when they learn what is happening in the other part of the world? They become aware of their rights perhaps? Exactly. That was the fallout of the higher education in India. Many educated Indians united to organize a movement against the British rule. Do you think this pleased the British? It can't have. Didn't they try to stop the spread of education because of this? They certainly tried to restrict higher education soon after 1858, but they could not succeed. However, there were some drawbacks to the system of education. The new system of education was completely different from the earlier one. It encouraged rote learning and the curricula and structure of education were designed to meet the needs of colonialism. 
modern technical education was neglected. Moreover, because of inadequate government funding, higher education was expensive and only the rich could afford it. In addition, even mass education was neglected. We also observe that because the medium of instruction was English, there was a huge gap between the educated Indians and the vast population of uneducated Indians. However, the education system served to promote patriotism. Didn't the British try to prevent this? Yes, but there were more Indian teachers and they played an important role in spreading the feeling of patriotism. Now, you've seen and learned about the effects of Western education. You've learned about the positive aspects as well as the drawbacks of the Western system of education. We have seen how an elite class of educated Indians emerged. These people learned about equality and liberty and started working for these rights in our country. They realized that education went hand in hand with social progress. Thus, there were a lot of people working to educate the people of our country. What impact did this have on the literacy rate? By the beginning of 20th century, four out of five Indian villages were without primary schools. Three out of four children grew up without education. Even in 1921, 92% of Indians were illiterate. At the end of British rule in 1947, the literacy rate was around 12% only. Only 24% of the male population was literate, whereas female literacy was just 7%. By 2007, this grew to 66%. That's fantastic. Yes, but it is still below the world average literacy rate, which is 84%. So you see, we still have a lot to do in the field of education. There were many great people who have contributed in this area, including some of Englishmen. Way back in 1781, Warren Hastings established a madrasa in Calcutta. Then there was Jonathan Duncan, who supported the establishment of a Sanskrit college in Varanasi. David Hare was one among many who opened schools. Can you tell me the pioneers in the field of education? The Christian missionaries. Very good. The Christian missionaries. They were the pioneers in the field of education in India. We've learned about Raja Ram Mohan Roy and his great work in the field of education. But did you know that Mahatma Gandhi also had a great role to play in this field? Listen carefully. The role of Mahatma Gandhi cannot be ignored because of the contributions to the field of education. And the contributions were so significant that even till today, we are talking about his contributions. During the freedom struggle, Mahatma Gandhi challenged Indians to establish national schools and boycott the grant and aid government schools. The National Council of Education was a symbol of revolt against the British. The new program was introduced to promote Indian languages, culture and nationalism. The program was called Nai Tali. The Kashi Vidyapeet, the Bihar Vidyapeet and the Jamia Milia Islamia were some of the schools that were established. Rabindranath Tagore established the Vishwabharati University at Shantiniketan. Ma'am, what about science? Did no one establish science colleges? Of course they did. And this happened in the 19th century only. The most famous ones are the Grant Medical College and the Pune Engineering College, which exists Till today. The most famous ones were the Grant Medical College and the Pune Engineering College which exist till today. The first Indians to graduate from the Grant Medical College were Bhau Daji and Atmaram Pandurang 
way back in 1851. Another great person to remember is Sir Syed Ahmad Khan. Sir Syed Ahmad Khan was a visionary who wanted Muslims to leave behind their orthodox ways and adopt Western education. He knew that this was the only way for them to get state employment. He worked to reform the madrasas and modernize the Indian Muslim community. He wished to raise the status of women and worked for women's education. In 1875, he established the Mohammedan Anglo-Oriental College at Aligarh and till his death in 1899, dedicated his life to spreading education among the Muslims through his institution. It was his dream to develop this college into an Indian Oxford University. Today, the college still exists, but under its new name, the Aligarh Muslim University. Besides these institutes, there were many other schools and universities in the different parts of the country. In Gulbarga, three people, Vithal Rao Deulgaonkar, Keshav Rao Koratkar and Garuda Rao started the Nutan Vidyalaya High School in 1907. The people of Karnataka benefited a lot from this school. There was also the Hyderabad Educational Conference which worked hard to found the Osmania University in Hyderabad in 1919. There is another great university which is still famous for its high standard of education and it is the MS University of Baroda. Though Baroda was principality under the British, the rulers were enlightened and introduced modern administrative systems and modern education at a very early date. The ruling family was the Gaikwad family and the Gaikwads established Baroda College in 1908. The principal at that time was Dr. Jackson and he recommended setting up an independent science institute. That was the seed which ultimately resulted in the establishment of a full-fledged university in 1949, the Maharaja Sayaji Rao University or the MS University. Can you tell me why was the MS University in the news recently? It was in the news recently because of one of its ex-students, Venkata Raman or Venky Ramakrishnan, who received the 2009 Nobel Prize in Chemistry. He had graduated from the MS University in BSc in Physics in the year 1971. There are more people that you must have heard of. One was a Nobel Prize winner. I know Sir Sivir Raman won the Nobel Prize for Physics. There were other people like Mahindalal Sarkar who founded the Indian Association for the Cultivation of Science. And we cannot forget to remember S. Vishweshwarya for his work in the field of hydraulic engineering and other branches of technology. Children, we have come to the end of this session of learning. Now let us go through quickly what we have learned today. Wood's Dispatch and the Spread of Education We also looked at the important landmarks in the development of the British system of education. We learned about the drawbacks of the Western system of education. It was expensive and only rich could afford it. Technical education and women's education were neglected and Indian customs and traditions were not promoted. The Western system of education had advantages as well. The educated Indians learned about equality and liberty and started the nationalist movement. In addition, education spread and schools and colleges were established. Now, can you give me some names? The MS University the Aligarh Muslim University, the Kashi Vidyapeet, the Bihar Vidyapeet and the Jamia Millia Islamia. You have been paying attention. Just tell me the names of the first three universities. The first three universities were Bombay, Calcutta and Madras. Can you name two famous educationalists? Rabindranath Tagore he founded the Vishwabharati University and Sir Syed Ahmad Khan, the Aligarh Muslim University. 
and two famous scientists. Sir C. V. Raman, he won the Nobel Prize for Physics and S. Vishweswarya. Before we end this session, I request our teacher and subject expert, Ms. Buam, to give our children a small assignment. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Students, we've come to the end of this very, very interesting lesson. Do you find it interesting? I found it. But students, I shall have to prepare you for examination by telling you the important questions that is presented in slides. State whether the following statements are true or false. One, Raja Ram Mohan Roy wanted higher education to be in English. The answer is true. Second, by the beginning of 20th century, every village had a primary school. The answer is false. Short questions. Who are the pioneers in the field of education? The answer is Christian missionaries. Question 2. In which year were the universities of Calcutta, Bombay and Madras set up? The answer is in the year 1857. Answer the following questions in 50 words. Question 1. What is Nai Talim? Question 2. Write down briefly Mahatma Gandhi's contribution in the field of education. Question 3. Write in brief Wood's Dispatch Policy.